detail. Oh. Ready. Face. Prepare. Post. Detail. Post. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Detail. Order. On. Ready. Face. Forward. On. Congressman Kleber, if you would please come forward for the invocation. Let's pray. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of the wealthy and God of the healthy, God of the weak and God of the meek, we come before you today asking that we are given a vision of how we ought to be based on the blessings you've given this great country. And as we gather, O oh God, we pray that this will in fact be a time to share with one another ideas to make our nation better than it is presented. A time to remember those who are hungry for justice, civility, and respect for those whose differences may place them in the category of the others. Bless us, O oh God, to recognize the public service of those who are among us today and make us remember your provisions and goodness with thankful hearts of being Americans. This is what we pray, amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Truman Library. I'm Kurt Graham, the director here, and it's a great pleasure to have you all here to join us for, uh, for such an important event to recognize public service. I can think of no better place and no better time to be honoring uh, public service in our nation. I was very struck by uh, the Congressman's prayer that we would have a vision in front of us of how we've been blessed as a nation uh, through, the, through, uh, through public service. One of the great blessings that this nation has are legacies of leadership like that that Harry Truman left for all of us. And it's incredible when you look at the list of people who have been honored in his name 
to think about the level and the degree of, of selfless public service that has been rendered. You know, the thing that stands out to me about Truman when I think about public service is he didn't just do the right thing, he did it for the right reason. And I think that's something that we need to remind ourselves of periodically, is that true public servants are servants in the highest sense of that word. They care deeply about their communities, they care deeply about what happens <coughs> around them and to the people that they care about. And they care about everybody. Uh, I remember when Truman said that he wanted to extend uh, basic rights to every American, he said, and I mean all Americans. And he said that in the context of a civil rights discussion, but I think he meant it even broader than that. I think he meant it as a human rights discussion, that every human being uh, deserves the, the privileges and the blessings that this nation has to offer. It's a great privilege today to be able to honor someone who uh, not only has been a great public servant in her own right, but uh, has, been, uh, has a connection to Harry Truman as well as a Truman scholar. I'm sure you're going to hear a little bit more about that later. I don't want to steal anyone's thunder, but nevertheless, I think it is, is wonderful to be able to, uh, to invoke Harry Truman's name on multiple levels today to be able to appreciate uh, what we have in this, in this nation and, and, uh, and, and what we yet will be. So with that, I welcome you and uh, thank you for being here and please enjoy the program. The Harry S. Truman Public Service Award was established in 1974 and is presented annually to an outstanding public servant who best possesses the great qualities that President Truman valued so deeply and that guided him through all of his years of public service. The Harry S. Truman Public Service Award is the highest honor the City of Independence bestows on a civilian and an honor that our citizens hold in the highest esteem. Each year, the recipient of this prestigious award is selected by the Harry S. Truman Public Service Award Commission, which is chaired by the mayor of the City of Independence. Please join me in recognizing the members of the 2018 Awards Commission, Mrs. Nina Anders, Mr. Victor Callahan, Mrs. Molly Clemens, Dr. Kirk Graham, Mrs. Helen French, Dr. Mark Shearer, and Mr. Charlie Shields. Thank you so much. I would also like to take a moment to recognize some of our other distinguished guests who are with us in attendance today. My colleagues on the Independence State Council, Mayor Pro Tem, Tom Van Camp, Councilman Scott Robertson, Councilwoman Karen DeLucy, and Councilman Mike Huff. Thank you for being here. Also with us today is our County Executive Frank White. Of course, former Mayor Don Rimel and former Mayor Barbara Potts. <laughs> And certainly, last but not least, and past Truman Award honoree, our friend, Congressman Emanuel Cleaver. <laughs> the carpenter uses his skills and labors to build and repair what's needed. Everybody needs a good carpenter. A good carpenter can take the most simple tools to build a home and change the neighborhood around them. Don Rimel is a good carpenter. He changed the landscape of our city. He used his skills to build roads and shops and stores and the arena on what was green pasture. He helped change the skyline of independence. He led a community to fix and repair neighborhoods that needed it. He worked every day to support the police and fire departments to protect what had been fixed. He led his community to improve our schools in those neighborhoods. He built far more than that. He built hope and empowered people to do the same. When our historic Independence Square courthouse was threatened, Don made it his mission to save it. Many people saw what needed to be done, 
but someone had to get it done, and that man was Don Rimmel. Today, the historic Truman Courthouse is not just saved, but a center for business, tourism, history, and art. Don Rimmel is a simple man. He is quite simply an example to all of us of what one dedicated, hardworking public servant can do to transform his community. Don Rimmel came from humble origins, his family moving to Independence when he was six months old, and his father working at Lake City Arsenal. Early in his life, he learned the importance of hard work, washing dishes at the age of 14. Later, he attended Bristol Elementary, Van Horn High School, and Central Missouri State. He was blessed to find in life the love of his life, Joe Marie Bennett. They both spent the next 50 years trying to make their community a better place, whether as a neighbor or at Maywood Baptist Church or as an elected official. Don was elected to the city council for three terms before becoming mayor for two terms. It was never his time. That time belonged to the people. He has been to countless neighborhood meetings and traveled the country and the world, spreading goodwill for the city he loves. He was likely at every neighborhood cleanup that any group had somewhere in his two decades with the city. Don listened to every problem, took every call, and visited every citizen who wanted his help. To Don, every problem of every taxpayer was important. On behalf of the Harry S. Truman Public Service Award Commission, it is my distinct honor to present the Harry S. Truman Special Recognition Award to Councilman, Mayor, and above all, a good carpenter, Don Rimmel. follow that. <laughs> and we're going to give it a try. Distinguished guests, Mayor Weir, City Council, and friends, I want to thank you for giving me this award. I was very taken back when I was told that I had received it. There are so many people that have done so much for independence. I've been privileged to surround myself with individuals and groups who lived Mr. Truman's quote. I quote, it is amazing what can be accomplished if you don't care who gets the credit. Sheila Saxton, the council assistant, and Kim Osborne, the mayor's assistant, are two classic examples of that quote. Sheila takes care of the city council persons and helps keep everything running as smoothly as possible. Kim, the mayor's assistant, kept me in line, told me where I was supposed to be and when I was supposed to be there. <laughs> Believe me, she could, she could get you there, too. During my term as mayor, I found I was fortunate to serve with a number of elected officials who were there for the right reason. Many of our successes were due to the ability of the city council, staff, and citizens to sit down as individuals or collectively and discuss the various opportunities brought to or that presented themselves. We could depend on surroundings 
and help from the Jackson County mayors, the county executive, the county legislature, along with state and federal elected officials to join with us in promoting our projects to enhance the quality of life and independence. We had strong support from the chamber and from our churches with ambassadors joining in on helping to get the school districts changed. And without their help, this would have never happened. But thank you so much for giving me this award. And I will honor it and treasure it forever. Thank you. Truman knew a world that had changed and become ever more dangerous. The world had realized the calamity of two world wars, only to emerge and enter a cold world war and the prospect of nuclear annihilation. As a soldier, he survived the unimaginable carnage of World War I. As a senator, vice president, and then president, he led the country through a second world war that killed 80 million people and laid waste all touched by its inception. And now the world had the atomic bomb. We too live in a dangerous world, a world that realized the danger on September 11th, a world whose great cities, New York, London, Paris, Brussels, know and have been struck by brutal acts of terror. But the there are those in the vanguard who serve to protect and secure us from terror. In her long and distinguished career of public service, Janet Napolitano epitomizes such a commitment. Appointed by President Obama as our nation's Secretary of Homeland Security in 2009, Napolitano understood the delicate balance in a republic between the need for security and the rights of citizens. For our nation, this was often complex and uncharted. Her character and background allowed her to provide this equilibrium. As a former US attorney and attorney general of Arizona and then governor, she came uniquely qualified for this difficult challenge of a post 9-11 world and the threat of global international terrorism. As Secretary of Homeland Security, Napolitano also recognized the daunting task of policymaking in particularly partisan times. Nearly two million people fly in the United States each day. Assuring our safety and our borders is a paramount and an extraordinary challenge. It may require restrictions and regulations that are unpopular at the time. However, it may also prevent or thwart the next act of terror. Napolitano used her keen abilities to accomplish this while preserving the fundamental rights of individuals and protecting our borders. As a 1977 Truman Scholar with an understanding of the importance of education, it is appropriate and fitting that she is the recipient of this award. In 2013, she left Washington to become president of the University of California system, which has 250,000 students and 10 campuses who have produced 62 Nobel Prize winners in research. When de done climbing mountains of bureaucratic academia, she is also an avid hiker and mountain climber who has climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> On behalf of the City of Independence, it is my great personal honor to present the Harry S. Truman Award for Public Service to Janet Napolitano.
Well, thank you, Mayor Weir. That's really, that's, that is remarkable. And I want to thank the City of Independence for this wonderful honor. Uh, thank you to the Truman Award Commission, uh, former Mayor uh, Rimmel, and the members of the City Council I've had the opportunity uh, to meet uh, today. Uh, I'd also like to recognize uh, my family members who uh, have joined me, uh, my aunt and uncle, John, June and Don McCandless, my cousin uh, Scott McCandless, his wife Liz, my cousin Steve McCandless, his wife Brenda. So I'm so glad you could join me here today. It's really nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> the McCandless row is right up here, so <laughs> be sure to say hi. Um, you know, it is a great honor to accept this award, which has such a rich history of remarkable recipients, from three former presidents, to Coretta Scott King and Martin Luther King Jr., to John Glenn and Madeleine Albright. And the list goes on. I deeply appreciate that you've placed me in such illustrious company, and I'm grateful to be here with you today to celebrate the role that public service plays at every level of our government, in every corner of our country. The power center of our government may be in Washington, D.C., but our local communities are where our democratic ideals are most crucially nurtured and practiced, places like independence. For the public good, we carry out these ideals through our commitment to our institutions our public schools, our parks, our libraries, our state and local governments. It's the time and attention ordinary people give to these institutions every day across America. Public service is the lifeblood of our democracy. I think this award is a fitting legacy for President Truman and a testament to the importance that ordinary public service given by ordinary people is to the health of our democracy. Truman biographer and historian David McCullough has noted that as a boy, President Truman's earliest memory was of chasing a frog around the yard, uh, laughing every time it jumped. From his years tilling the earth as a Missouri farmer to his time in the Oval Office, he never forgot where he came from. This place shaped him and the community welcomed him home with open arms at the end of his presidency. Now I can relate to the formative way President Truman's Missouri home shaped him, although instead of frogs, I recall lizards. Uh, my dad was uh, dean of the medical school at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, and one of my fondest childhood memories was hunting uh, on the campus grounds for blue tail lizards while dad was in his lab checking on experiments. These lizards have detachable tails. Uh, and he would pay me and my brother a nickel for every lizard's tail that we brought him. I, you know, I don't think he really needed the lizards, he just needed a creative way to distract us. <laughs> you know, I have never forgotten my border state upbringing. I learned a deep respect and commitment to public service from both my father and my mother who believed in giving back to their communities. Now, Truman is our last modern president who was not a college graduate. His family couldn't afford to send him to college and he quit an accounting course in Kansas City because he didn't have the money to complete it. He was shaped by the jobs he took in the mailroom of the Kansas City Star, as a timekeeper for the Santa Fe Railroad, and later planting corn and stacking hay on his family's farm in Grandview. Education was a right that he believed in and advocated for throughout his presidency. It was during his years as president that eight million veterans attended college through the GI Bill. This was a significant expansion of opportunity for many who would not have had the opportunity in the past. It was only appropriate then that Congress founded a scholarship for future public servants as a way to honor President Truman. And as was noted in the introduction, I was fortunate to be uh, selected in the first class of Truman Scholars in 1977. And I mention that only because that program in Truman's name provided me 
tangible encouragement to enter public service. It's difficult to imagine someone winning the presidency today without a college degree. And at the same time, the audacity of a plan on the scale of the GI Bill is also hard to imagine today. We've lost some ground in the common belief in the value of college and the importance of investing in higher education dreams of young people today. And yet now it is more important than ever to remove barriers to higher education and build new pathways to college. This has been a top priority at the University of California where 42% of our undergraduate students are the first in their families to attend college. UC educates more first generation students than any other institution of its caliber. And these students not only attend the University of California, they thrive there. We work to ensure they have the support they need. And one simple factor is simply knowing that there are others who came before them. Nearly 900 members of our faculty, who themselves were the first in their families to graduate from college, serve as mentors for these first generation students. They help the students identify as role models and demystify the college experience, help students feel less alone. The transformative nature of higher education is clear in the trajectory of students like Daniela Estrada. Daniela is a UC Irvine political science major who graduated last year with honors and was named both a Fulbright and a Truman Scholar. Daniela was a first generation college student. Her father had to quit school as a young child to pick tobacco in the fields of Mexico. 46 years later, he watched his daughter receive her diploma alongside her peers at a great public university where half of the students are also the first in their families to attend college. Daniela has a dream of becoming a public defender with the goal of ultimately helping change our criminal justice system for the better. She had a mentor at UC Irvine who said, who she said believed in her more than she believed in herself and that made all the difference. This is the power of education in action. It demonstrates the potential for education to empower an individual to make a difference, to strengthen our democracy through public service. It is a uniquely American formula for success. Eleanor Roosevelt once wrote that, quote, the individual is the spur to public action. We are the government. That means that in every small unit of government, each individual citizen must feel his individual responsibility to do the best with his citizenship that he possibly can achieve. Close quote. We are the government and our service to each other is of the highest importance. It is an honor to accept this award today and I am proud to continue to serve the public good. And I'm especially proud of all of the students across the country from the University of Missouri to the University of California, who are teaching us about courage, a rejection of cynicism, and a willingness to roll up their sleeves and get to work to make our country better. I am proud of the role that their education will play in their ability to think critically and fulfill their roles and responsibilities as citizens. They are already serving their communities. They refuse to accept the status quo or ignore injustice anywhere. They may be students, but they are teaching us about grit and integrity and the hope for a better world. I believe President Truman would be proud. So let me close with the words of the motto of the University of California. It's a university, so it's in Latin. Be it Lux. Let there be light. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much for those inspiring words and so much for gracing us with your presence today in Independence. Um, Congressman Cleaver was taking lots of notes, so <laughs> you may hear those words again someday. <laughs> um, following um, the retrieval of the colors and the benediction, you're invited to join us in the, in the lobby for a brief public reception with our honorees, so please do take the opportunity to um, spend some time and congratulate today's honorees. Um, so Congressman Cleaver, I will invite you back up for the benediction and the retrieval of the colors. Thank you. Let us pray. Dismiss us now, O oh God, not from your presence, but from this place. And dismiss us, O oh God, with a higher level of appreciation for those who commit their lives to public service. Bless Governor Napolitano. Give her continued strength and energy to do exactly what she's doing. And bless Mayor Rimel, give him years and years and years and years. And we thank you for their service. And we ask now that you allow your angels of protection to surround them, protect them, guide them, nourish them. And then, oh God, they too will give you credit for their accomplishments. We ask this prayer in your name. A men and a women. Forward, march. 